Today, we're looking at a blue ink by Monteverdi, Malibu Blue. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that if you're in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Noodler's Nib Creeper, wrote with it for a day, and used it to take the notes for this video. In order to standardize some of the writing sample, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. Now, more papers are tested, and they'll show up a bit later. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen. It does have some shading that occurs throughout it. The extra fine is ridiculously lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does offer minor spots of shading, six seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, and decent shading throughout, 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show color variation, and we get it. Tomoy River. No bleeding, normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, it has halo, no sheen, it has shade. The halo and the shading show up together. Like if you look at the boo of Malibu, nice and dark with halo. But you look at the D in Monteverde, lighter, no halo. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does offer shading through the writing, eight seconds to dry. Medium is a tad darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, halo, sheen, it does offer some shading through the writing, 32 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows color variation and we get it in the writing. Nice. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, some nice shading throughout. The extra fine, again, ridiculously light with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does have spots of shading, just peppered in darker spots. Four seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine, even much darker than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading here. 16 seconds to dry. From four to 16, holy moly. Wow. Was it like that? It wasn't like that before. Well, yeah, actually the Tomoe River was a huge jump. Tomoe went from 8 to 32, 4 to 16. Wow, what's going on? Scrubby of the Extra Fine shows good color variation. We get spots of it. The medium shows none, and we got none. I agree with Vita that we can learn a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And you can see the line that I put down, but a majority of this ink is immediately being pushed away by that water. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And what we see is that blue line on the bottom really started to seep in and get there. And the pencil line that I put in, obviously prematurely because it pushed past after I thought it was dry, but there's a lot of ink still moving, but there does seem to be the possibility of a little bit of resistance for this ink. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it's how much this has dulled. It held itself together very well, but it really got washed out in the highlighter, so I wouldn't use it in a note-taking situation if I had to go back and highlight. Water is reactivating and lifting, but not all of this ink. There's still quite a bit of this ink behind. Pen flush is completely removing the ink. There, you see a lot of the white of the paper coming through, meaning pen flush is all that you should need. I did use 
pen flush to get this out of my pen, it was a little more stubborn than I had expected. One third bleach solution completely removes it from the paper. It does create a little bit of uh, kind of light brown staining, but you don't need pen flush to get this out of your pen. I test viscosity or flow by using a tilt test that I've linked in this video. For the inks I've tested, I have found a average viscosity of 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Monteverde's Malibu Blue has a viscosity of 1.55 making this a very wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Monteverdi's Malibu Blue has an average dry time of 13 seconds, so despite it being very wet, it put it right on the edge of normal in its dry time. Instead of finding inks that look like Monteverde's Malibu Blue, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice brown, Noodler's Rome's Burning. The second writing sample is done on Northbooks, Fabriano, and 28 pound copy paper. Here we're looking at Northbooks paper. Not that it's made for fountain pens, but we do find plenty of inks that work well with it. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is still ridiculously light compared to the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading that definitely show up there, just not a lot. One second to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, some shading throughout the writing, not tons, but still there. One second to dry still. The scrubby for both do show some color variation, and we do get some in the writing. And Fabriano. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread halo sheen. There is little bits of shading there, not tons, but little bits. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread halo sheen, no shading, five seconds to dry. Medium is mm, about the same tone, maybe a tad darker than the extra fine with no feather spread. Halo sheen, some shading is there, very minor, very sporadic, 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both does show some color variation, although it was not really noteworthy in the writing. 28 pound copy paper, how's it gonna do? Well, the medium bled and had a lot of show through, but the extra fine did very well. The medium had a whole bunch of feathering, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub, or sorry, the stub, the medium. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading, one second to dry. Now the scrubby says we should have some shading when you look far left to far right, but it's not there in the writing sample. Now this is composition notebook. No bleeding, naturally we get a bunch of show through because it is such a thin paper. The medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The scrubby is still showing us we should get color variation, although we actually get none in the writing and that is all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of Monteverdi's Malibu Blue? It does shade very well, but it's because it's so light. It feels like it's really undersaturated, and that's what's allowing it to really shade very well. It's so pale that if it didn't shade, I don't know that you would really be able to read what was put down on the page. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? There was a lot of pens where I really didn't enjoy my writing experience until I went with a very wet medium pen. It allowed me to get a dark enough tone to be able to read it comfortably and still have some of the shading that it has to offer. I'm gonna remind you that I'm here every day with a new ink review. Thanks for watching.